if, he, if people can be trusted on where you can verify them, you probably ought to trust them where you can't. Now, if Jesus really did rise from the dead, would you follow him? Yeah. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here on a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out Skeptic Students Challenges Frank on Bible Reliability. Reliability. Um, this is going to be amazing. I love Frank video. And whenever it comes about Christianity, I'm a big fan of that. We're going to try a Christian. So, guys, let's get right to today's video. If you don't trust the Bible and ancient texts, what could make you believe in the resurrection? If you don't, well, I guess my question would be, why wouldn't you trust this ancient text if you evaluate them and you come to the conclusion they're historically reliable? Why would this well, be invented? That kind of thing. Go ahead. You don't come to the conclusion that they're historically reliable. Okay, I, my question would be, why do you think they're not? Because they were written 100, 200 years later. Later than what? Later than when Jesus was crucified. Where did you come up with those dates? Google. Huh? The, I just looked it up. It was like 100. He, it was written, or public, the Hebrew Bible was published around 100 AC. He was killed in 30 AC. If you only, the life expectancy is probably shorter then. And instead it was published, so that's like seven years. They were already 30 or 40, so they're either old and senile or dead, so... Run those dates by me again. It's, it was 100, 8, 8, 100 when they, the Hebrew Bible was published about, because we don't actually know, and then 30 no, no, when they, he was The killed, Hebrew Bible, you mean, you, you mean the Old Testament? No, it said, well, how would they publish the Old Testament after he, after he died? No, we, we have Old Testament documents prior to Jesus. Okay. We have the Septuagint, which was 250 B.C. So that's 250 years prior to Jesus. We, we, we have the whole... Uh, we have Dead Sea Scrolls. We have a scroll, the whole, entire book of Isaiah from like 150 B.C. So the Old Testament's written before yeah. Jesus. You get that, right? Yeah, but okay. when was it published? Do you, do you know? What do you mean published? Well, yeah, I can show you what it said. Like it said well, it was... If Hebrew it's Bible. on the internet, it's got to be true, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when was the Bible published? Okay, okay. First of all, the, the documents we call the New Testament were written anywhere between say 40 AD and I believe 70 AD okay, okay? Jesus so, was crucified in 33 AD okay now the sources inside those documents go all the way back to the event of the resurrection itself in fact the earliest evidence for the resurrection is recorded in a passage we call 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 8 where Paul says what I received of first importance I pass on to you so Paul is writing in about 55 AD to the church at Corinth in Greece and he's quoting a section that was memorized that even atheistic scholars agree goes all the way back near 33 AD and that section talks about who Jesus appeared to after he was resurrected. So, despite the fact that Paul is writing it in 55 AD, about 22 years after the resurrection event, the data that Paul is writing down goes all the way back to the event itself. It would be like today, if uh, you wanted to write a history of, say, 9-11. Um, which is 22 years ago. And you went and interviewed eyewitnesses. Some of them are in this room. And they told you what happened. Would it matter that you wrote it 22 years later? Or would the source from the event itself be authoritative? You could lose it in translation from what they saw, memorized for 20 years, and then you publish. You could misremember things, but there's something known as an impact event. An impact event is something you don't forget. Mm. You might forget what you had for breakfast this morning, but you won't, uh, you won't f forget something that happened 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago if you're old enough. Now, you're not. There may be a couple of us in here that are this old. Let me ask a question. Only a few of you are going to raise your hand. How many people in here can remember where you were and what you were doing November 22nd, 1963?
Raise your hand and hold it up. You see these people with their hands up? These people are very old, okay? <laughs> November 22nd, 1963 is my earliest memory. I was two years old in two days. And I'm standing in the living room in our home in Wanamassa, New Jersey, and my mother is sitting on an ottoman in front of a black and white TV, weeping uncontrollably. Mommy, what's the matter? What's, they killed the president. They killed the president. President Kennedy assassinated that day. I can still see in my mind right now my mother when she was 26 years old sitting on that ottoman. She's 86 today, but I can see her when she was 26. I remember what I said to her. And I remember what she said to me. And that was 60 years ago. Where were you when the second plane hit the tower? You remember where you were and what you were doing. Why? Because it was an impact event. Now, if Jesus rose from the dead, do you think that would have been an impact event? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah. Do you think they would have forgotten about it? Do you think they would have had any trouble remembering what he said and did? Possibly. Yeah. Probably not, right? Okay. Yeah, so just like you can interview people here today about 9-11 and get an accurate account so could the New Testament writers, and many of them were eyewitnesses themselves. So I don't know where you're reading this kind of thing, but the New Testament documents are written within the lifetime of the eyewitnesses, by eyewitnesses or people that knew eyewitnesses. For example, Luke, uh, who was a doctor and interviewed eyewitnesses, actually uh, puts forth a very accurate account of what he said he saw and you can verify this by looking at archaeological remains and geographic uh, remains and topography from the Gospel of Luke and also the book of Acts in fact there's 84 details in the book of Acts alone that have been proven to be eyewitness data just from chapter 13 to chapter 28 the end of the book Luke was actually traveling with Paul he's an eyewitness of that period so you're right, you know, if this was 100 or 200 years later, we might be skeptical of it. But when we have eyewitnesses and eyewitness data that can be confirmed, that's telling us that this really could be true. Let me say one other thing. We just did a podcast on this two days ago. It's the, it's the podcast up right now, and I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. There have been seven people associated with the crucifixion of Jesus found in archaeology. Seven of them, including Jesus himself. Jesus, Caiaphas, Simon of Cyrene, Pilate, Herod, Peter, and one other I can't remember right now. Seven names from the first century have been found in the dirt that are mentioned in the crucifixion account of Jesus. All told, there are more than 30 names in the New Testament that have been found in archaeology and other writings from the time. This is not an invented story. Can I? Go but, ahead. But that, just because they're names, that doesn't mean he rose from the dead. Is no, that, it doesn't. But it does show that they're telling historical facts. And so, if, he, if people can be trusted on where you can verify them, you probably ought to trust them where you can't. Mm. Now... If Jesus True. really did rise from the dead, would you follow him? Yeah. yeah. With, oh. I knew you were going to you were gonna say you were going to ask this earlier. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Well, okay, like, well, how much reading have you really done on this? Not a ton. Okay, so think about it just, yeah, read. For, just for a second. Regardless of whether he rose from the dead or not, let's just think about it this way. Jesus of Nazareth inarguably is the most influential human being in history. Yeah. True? Yeah. It's okay. Christianity. Now, if we're going to consider ourselves people who are going to follow the truth wherever it leads, you have to at least check this out, right? You have to do some reading. You have to try and figure out, did this really happen? Otherwise, if, if we don't, I don't think we can really consider ourselves people who are pursuing truth. We may be pursuing what we want to pursue, but we're not really pursuing truth. You have to investigate the great figures of history, especially Jesus. Because if Jesus rose from the dead, most important fact in history. If he didn't rise from the dead, irrelevant. Got to check it out, right? Yep. Check out, not, not just my book, there are many other books out there. All right? Yep.
Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. This was amazing. Like the clarification was beautiful. Like Frank really knows how to explain in details. Like I've never seen it this way, bro. Him explaining it gives me a more eye-opening. There's an impact in vets that you can never forget. Even if you're in your 60s, your 70s, you still remember that specific date. That specific day. And like it's it's funny, but it's it's true. It's true. Because if Paul was able to make that statement about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, means he ought to remember what happened. You understand? Like there's something that happened that day that made him write it down. Irrespective of people accepting it or, or not, it's an it's an event that really happened. And Paul was able to remember everything. There's no way he would have forgotten it because that's the significant day, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You understand? So, um, even the 9 11, 22 years ago, is it 22 years or more than 22 years ago? People still remember it up to today. You understand? People still remember the event up to today. It's still a like the trauma is still in some people's mind and let me put it like that i've seen watched movies I, I can't remember it because i was probably very very small by that time but some people still have that that's that remembrance that is stuck in their head they can't forget it because the trauma that they experienced during those period is unforgettable so frank explaining this in details really means a lot irrespective of how you see it of how it's been an atheist or not you have to take your time to check the facts. Did this really happen? Did Jesus of Nazareth really died? And without any doubt, if you go into deep research, deep research, you figure out that Jesus actually died. Then there's something that about Christianity that you need to look into. People like it's the, the scrolls are there. The the books are alive. The Bible is alive. And Christianity is a very pure and real religion. Even if people are trying to like mess around with it. They're having false prophets. Jesus talked about all this. Things that are happening that make you feel like this Christianity, I don't really know who they see. I don't really who they see they are. Jesus talked about all this. Christianity is real. Christianity is alive. Christianity is beautiful. It's lovely. And you making more research, the same Google that he Googled to come and um, defend the statements with Frank. If you make, use that same Google and make more research, Jesus of Nazareth died and resurrected. Um, there were eyewitnesses. It's not that it does happen. There were eyewitnesses. That's the beautiful thing about it. There were eyewitnesses that saw the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's, it's me, like if I was there, like the way the impact to be on me, I would be very marveled. You know, sometimes unless people experience some, some art or some, some certain things before they want to believe. Like Thomas, the doubting Thomas, Jesus was like, Yes, my hands. This is the hole that they pierced in the nail. That is when Thomas believed Jesus Christ. The same Tom Thomas is exactly the same people we are having in this world right now. They want to see Jesus really died. This is the hole that is in his hands before they believe that it's true. Jesus of Nazareth actually died and resurrected. So I, I, I would really love that students, the skeptic students, to go make more research about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a very eye-opening research, and it's really mean it would be a life-changing for that student. And I love how Frank really explained this in depth, like Jesus Christ is. It's a lot to talk about, and the impact he made is significant. And Christianity is the most influential religion in the entire world. Like, is the biggest <laughs> in the entire world. So there must be something about Christianity that makes. That made millions of people to want to be 
even billions of people to be part of that religion. There must be something significant about Christianity. So if the student look into it, I believe he's going to convert. But Frank is really an exception, a man, and I love his videos, and I would love to check more of his videos. Comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as you can. And subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all